Hey, Out of Focus viewers, this is Dick again. I'm here with Chris. We're doing a one-year follow-up on my GT3. I've had it just over a year. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about what it's been like owning it and how I compare it to some of the other cars that Chris and I have driven in the autofocus series that we've done on a number of cars and also other cars that I've owned. Uh, you, we've done a thorough review of this on a GT3 video from about a year ago. There's a link below that you'll be able to find that goes into a lot more detail about the performance aspects, some of the things on the inside. I'd like to tell you a little bit about what it's been like owning this car. And we'll do some in-car video where you'll hear the fact that at normal speed, city, highway, this thing is cranking over, but it's a fantastic package. And for somebody like me that goes to the grocery store and clips apexes, looks for a green arrow that's 200 yards away that I'm going to be able to get uh, because this car is just so predictable and so stable, it's been perfect for me. Uh, the ride is stiff. Chris and I did a YouTube video, also linked below, on a GT3 RS uh, that we borrowed, a brand new one, Lizard Green. Borrowed it from Circle Porsche in Long Beach where I bought this car. And I think both of us found after driving it for a while that it is stiff. It's got solid bushings in the back. Uh, it's The weight, interestingly, is about the same. It's got the bigger turbo body. Uh, by the way, speaking of wide body, with the 992s going to the wider body like the 4S, it's going to be interesting to see what the new GT2 R GT3 RS and the GT3 are like. Presumably, they're going to keep the naturally aspirated engine. be interesting to see if there's a little bump in horsepower. Maybe this will go to 520 like the GT3 RS. I have never wanted for torque, especially with PDK. Sometimes I'm, I'm going in PDK Sport to give me a little faster shifts to hold it in the higher gears. So I'm always in a range of torque and horsepower where I've got all the power I need. I drive this a lot in manual, you know, with the, just with the shift paddles. And the thing I like about the way Porsche does PDK is that I can be shifting manually while I'm in automatic mode. And after I, you know, it knows that I no longer need to stay in manual. In other words, uh, it can say that I'm not accelerating hard or I'm not braking hard. It'll automatically go back into automatic mode. Likewise, when I push the gear lever over and I've selected manual, it will stay in manual and it won't flip back to uh, automatic, not knowingly. So again, a lot of uh, great features on this car. It's, the quality has been perfect. Uh, Porsche many years ago did the Toyota lean manufacturing model where they adopted a lot of their lean enterprise techniques, a lot of their quality techniques. I've never had a Porsche where I've had problems or I've gone back for warranty work. So it's just finished its one year service. That's when Chris and I got to drive the GT3 RS as a loaner, so to speak. Uh, but again, this car sounds great. Uh, I love the look of it. I love motorsports. I love the fact that it, when I went to Long Beach last year and went to the uh, races up there, when I heard the 911 RSRs accelerating out of the slow corner, number 11, up the long straight, by God, that car sounded like this. Or maybe I should say this car sounds like it because this car is built on the same assembly line and with the same, a lot of the same technical input as the Porsche race cars. So that's the story of why we're doing this video and maybe as Chris and I are driving a little bit, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that I feel when I'm driving this car. Uh, we have pretty good roads here in California. Not, we don't have frost heave, uh, but you can, even in, in the regular suspension setting mode, you can feel what's under you. Steering is very tight, perfectly weighted. Throttle response is great. Uh, and then I actually often will put it into the sport plus mode or the sport mode of the suspension uh, because I might be like shooting for a, a, a tight turn up ahead or a, one of my favorite maybe chicanes or entry ramps and then I'll dial in as much suspension as I can get. So overall, I love this car and I think uh, it's going to take my Porsche dealer a lot of effort to pry my hands off the steering wheel when the next best thing comes along. So uh, now we're gonna go for a ride and uh, we'll do a little bit more commentary maybe when we're inside the car. And again, thanks for watching. I hope you're gonna to subscribe to Autofocus. Chris has just been loading up a lot of great cars and coffee videos, uh, Saturday events uh, where there are supercar shows. So uh, uh, it's a great channel and I appreciate uh, Chris's uh, enabling me to bring this car to you. Thanks.
Okay, autofocus fans, we're back in the GT3. It's a 991.2, 500 horsepower, 339 foot-pounds of torque. You know, I might mention in starting out here while we're, we're driving along that uh, I came from a Turbo S with 560 horsepower, it's a Gen 1 991, and 556 foot-pounds of torque. So I wondered what the difference would be. The engine in this car is sensational. It revs quickly. Of course, it's naturally aspirated, aspirated compared to the twin turbo and the uh, the turbo S. Uh, also, the gear ratios are very close on this PDK, and the gear at lower uh, rear end, meaning a higher number, uh, also helps keep the RPMs high. So, there are some things I do when I'm warming up the car in the morning. I keep it in manual. I use the uh, the paddle neutral so that I can coast to a stop and uh, disengage the gearbox and then it automatically will reset to whatever speed you're going. So if I'm coming to a stop, it'll automatically, when I let go of the paddles, drop me into uh, first gear. One thing that's cool about this too, you know, they say you can use it if a person were into violent snap oversteer, you can pull the power off the rear wheels just by doing the... Uh, the, the paddle neutral with pulling both paddles back. It's also cool if you're going through a tunnel or under an overhead pass through the paddle neutral and rev the engine a few times. That's cool, especially in the GT3. Of course, I'm driving with sport exhaust on uh, on some Saturday morning traffic. Uh, some other things too that are so different from the Turbo S. I love this as a daily driver, uh, but there are some compromises that some people might say, oh, I, I don't want to live with that. Maybe I'd be better off in a a turbo or a GTS. Uh, among those things are the car doesn't have uh, keyless go. I don't mind that. It's the old school, put the key in the left side like the old Le Mans starts and um, go. Uh, you have to lock the car from the outside with the keys. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't have parking sensors. Okay, I have to be a little bit more careful. You know, if I go to Home Depot uh, in this car. Sometimes if I know I've got a great chicane coming up or I'm going to turn a corner uh, that I want, I want to take at speed, uh, then I will actually, I will put in the, uh, the suspension into sport mode. Occasionally, I'll take uh, electronic stability control off by holding down a button here on the dash. I can t on the, uh, the center console, I can also uh, take uh, ESC and traction control off completely. But it's hard to shake this car loose. I've driven the earlier generation, the 991.1, at Exotic Cars Racing, where you can really, you know, drive this car at your own personal nine or ten knots. And uh, it's just really hard to get the the back to break loose. It's really well planned. It's got a lot of rubber there. We're coming to a place here where I think I'm going to be able to wind this out a little bit, so you can get the joy of 9,000 RPMs of pure, naturally aspirated magic. Uh, I'm actually putting it in PDK Sport um, and getting it down.
other thing too about this car is there isn't a single time with, that I've driven it that I've been bored. So even while I'm doing all this chatting, I'm still enjoying it. But boy, uh, regardless of where I'm driving it, when I'm driving it, whether it's just the precise handling, uh, whether it's being stuck in traffic, which is not the greatest thing in the world, um, and you get a little sense of what the other cars are here. There, there are a lot of, by the way, there are a lot of Porsches out here. So, you know, a guy like me who's loved cars since I was three, if I'm driving a GT3, people are going out, ah, midlife crisis. Well, let me, let me digress again, since I got a couple of minutes here and then I'll shut this thing off. I've had Porsches for 20 years and every year when I, you know, every, every time I get a service, they say, uh, you know, were you pleased with the service? Yes, I was. Is there anything about the Porsche, anything you'd like to change? And so I go, yes, there's one thing. Could you make the turn signal louder? Because the turn signal in this car is so soft, I'd even write. First time I just said, make the turn signal louder. Second time I said, you know, I don't like driving for five miles with my left turn signal on. I feel like a senior citizen. So here I am, 20 years later, I guess I qualify for a senior citizen because I get in movies uh, cheaper than my wife. Um, and it's still quiet. I'll turn it on right now. I mean, all right, I played rock and roll a lot, so I mean, it's not very loud. Maybe you're all hearing it. I'm not hearing it. Sometimes I can hear it. Um, I, I've driven, you know, we did some videos on Aston Martins. They have this like turn signal that's like a clunk, like clunk, clunk, clunk. You can't miss it. So I said, look, I don't want to drive 20 miles with my left turn signal on, you know, because I feel, you know, like a senior citizen. So, and I don't drive like a senior citizen. Anyway, it's still quiet, but you know what? That's about the only thing I can find fault with with these marvelous cars. Light, agile, point them where you want to go. Uh, it's even, I love music, so I got the upgraded sound system. Um, but guess what? I never listen to the radio. Uh, if I'm stuck in traffic, maybe I would. Maybe on the freeway. Uh, that's the other thing about this car, you know, because it winds up pretty good. Compared to a Turbo S where I could, you know, cruise at probably under well under 2,000 RPM. I didn't have the torque to do that. In this car, when I'm cruising at 65 or 70, I'm probably doing about 2,200 RPM. And I, I just hate to put that much wear and tear on this beautiful engine, even though it'll go forever, because I'm not, haven't tracked it yet. Uh, might track it, or might just go back to the Porsche Experience Center, which like Exotics Cars Racing, is only about, uh, or exotics racing, is only about 50 miles from where I live. So I sort of like beating up somebody else's car. And the Porsche Experience Center is phenomenal. You know, they have a, a straight track, a drag strip, so you can, do, uh, you can do launch control. They have a wet track. They have a wet skid pad. Um, and they have a really tight, cool little road course, too. Uh, as some of my friends and family would say, this guy could talk all day and not take a breath. So you know what, I'm looking down here. I'm gonna hope I can stop this thing with my iPhone. Traffic starting to move. Goodbye everyone, and thanks for subscribing to Chris's Auto, Auto Focus YouTube.